Hey everybody, Peter Valley here. Welcome to this extremely timely and rather pressing for a lot of people subject of new textbook restrictions on Amazon. So we're going to talk about everything we know right now about these new textbook restrictions. They actually have not been implemented yet. They're proposed or alluded to restrictions. Uh, after Amazon sent out their what I'm calling the textbook apocalypse email that went out just a few days ago as of the time I'm recording this. And I want to separate some of the truth from the hype because as you know when these things happen and there's ambiguity with Amazon, there's lots of misinformation floating around. So I want to kind of get into what the truth of this is and what I think is going to happen and everything else. So um, actually there's this is one of the first videos I've done. I don't do videos very much. I've got 90 videos queued up, literally ready to go, but um, this is one of the first of them. So if you don't know who I am, <clears throat> which is totally reasonable, and you're probably probably actually better off for it. Uh, my name is Peter Valley. I've been selling on Amazon for about 10 years. I do a website called fbamastery.com. Done a bunch of stuff. You didn't come here to talk about me, or listen to me talk about me. You came here to get to the subject matter, So, but I'll just go through this really quick. I wrote a couple books, um, online book arbitrage and more. I co-founded an online book arbitrage tool, blah, blah, blah. The point of all this is... Um, I didn't just come out of the out of the woodwork yesterday, so I've been around for a minute, and I'm going to share some of my insights. Okay, so in this video, here's what we're going to talk about: Amazon's textbook apocalypse email. Why I believe the two biggest rumors about what's to come are actually false. My theories as to what's really happening here, and why this may be limited to just certain conditions of textbooks. Why I think this might be limited just to certain publishers, three of them in particular. Why Amazon, I believe, will never ban textbooks. I'm going to back that up with some numbers. And I'm going to give you some steps you can take right now if you're concerned about these changes. So what's happening? Over the last week, Amazon sent out an email to many, not everybody, I did not actually get this email, to many sellers requesting invoices for textbooks they have listed for sale and alluding that there are some new restrictions to come. So obviously everybody went into a complete panic. The email was extremely vague and created understandable chaos among sellers who wonder, what does this mean? I'll show you the email in just a second so you can get an idea if you haven't seen it how vague it really is. And so what I'm going to do in this video is turn over basically every stone of this subject, talk about what we know, what we don't know, and what I think is to come. So some context just to set the stage. I have to say this. I think this is really important. Um, I just passed my 10-year anniversary selling on Amazon, and I, I noticed a pattern over those 10 years. About every six to nine months, there is a massive wave of panic that freaks everybody out, and everybody starts screaming. And literally, not literally, but these rumors or hints of trouble that seem to happen every six to nine months bring otherwise sane sellers to almost literally hurl themselves off the nearest building in existential terror because they lose their minds um, over things that we don't really, it's, where it's usually too early to say what's going to happen, but people tend to get very panicked very easily. So, And then a few months later, no one even remembers what the drama is about. Now, that doesn't mean bad things don't happen. It doesn't mean all sort of um, rumors of big changes to come don't necessarily come to pass because they can what it means is with Amazon, it's never what you think it is in the beginning. Um, in the decade I've been selling, there's only been a single example that I can think of of some sort of Amazon apocalypse, shockwaves of terror that actually end up resulting in any significant dent in my business. And that was the uh, the new FBA fees that happened in February 2017, where lower end books took a pretty big hit. The the higher end books, when you get fifteen dollars and up, didn't weren't really affected that much. Um, but that, yeah, that, that put a dent in a lot of our businesses, but we just had to adjust, right? That's what you do. Um, but despite this and all of the consistent panic, we're, we're still here, right? I'm still here. I think you're still here if you're watching this. So with the understanding that develops on Am developments on Amazon are almost literally never as bad as they look, let's walk through the facts and some of the analysis around this textbook apocalypse email that just went out. So what is this email? Well, here it is. Uh, I won't read this whole thing to you, but it basically says, hey, Amazon seller. Um, we want up to th uh, copies of invoices um, for uh, from your primary suppliers issued in the last six months for your quote popular textbook products. Now pay very close attention to that language. We're going to spend a lot of time analyzing what that means uh, because of course Amazon will not tell us but popular textbook products. Those I think are the operative words. And they go on to say, hey, if we don't hear from you in three weeks, we may actually remove your textbook listings. So, of course, people are freaking out because most people who sell textbooks on Amazon are selling used textbooks, and they don't have 
invoices from quote suppliers they have receipts <laughs> from thrift stores or no receipts from the garage sale uh, hosts that they bought their books from or whatever the case may be right most of us don't have these receipts so that's where a lot of the panic comes from so what's Amazon really saying with this email let's kind of analyze this a little bit well first of all I, I, I can't stand everybody can't stand how how vague Amazon is with these emails they send out because they could alleviate so much you know customer service headache on their end with people blowing them up with emails and so much panic on our end if they were just clear in the beginning but of course that email I just showed you hopelessly vague uh, the email is void of anything meaningful or actionable with which we can start preparing for the future it just doesn't say anything it's a, basically a vague and ominous threat um, with no clear meaning so we have to get into okay let's start doing Amazon's job for them and kind of read between the lines and figure out what meaning we can extract from this email so what Amazon is saying rather explicitly is that certain restrictions will be implemented for textbooks and these restrictions will apply to quote popular textbooks and that they're requesting invoices for textbooks that you've listed in the last six months so um, now you have to understand these two things right here are almost completely absent from all the conversations I've seen in the Facebook groups and so on up to this point. People seem to miss that Amazon's being very clear. This is not going to affect all textbooks. Um, it's just going to affect, quote, popular textbooks and only certain textbooks, and that's all they're saying. So right off the top, almost everybody chattering about this in forums is wrong. This is not, not a textbook ban. Um, however, that's one of the top two rumors that you keep hearing. Number one, rumor is that Amazon is banning textbooks. Well, look, you don't have to look any further than Amazon's own email to know this is not true. Amazon is cl is not clear on very much, but they are clear that whatever change is being proposed, it only applies to certain textbooks, okay? So we can take a little bit of a an exhale moment um, when we realize that. Um, I'm going to give my theory as to what that means in just a second when they talk about certain textbooks. The second rumor is that these are global changes that affect all sellers. Well, right off the top, the evidence is strong. This is not a restriction that affects all sellers. I haven't personally received the email. I know a lot of people that I've been in touch with who have not received the email. Um, it's been hard to get detect patterns as to who's getting the email and who's not. But um, but a lot of people have not received the email. So right, and you know they can stagger out emails over time. By the way, so it's too early as of the time I'm recording this to say that anyone's fully in the clear. I don't feel fully in the clear yet, even though I haven't received it yet. It's been, I think, about five days um, since people started to get this email as of the time I'm recording this. So it's possibly too early to say. But based on this evidence alone, these restrictions are less severe than the DVD restrictions we saw in I think that was 2014, which affected all sellers. So right off the top, this is not nearly as serious as some other stuff we've seen in the past. Um, and it's hard to say roughly what percentage of sellers are getting this email. Um, we just don't know much as far as that goes. But I've corresponded um, with about 30 sellers about this. And one pattern that stands out, stands out is that um, all of the sellers I talked to except for one had opened their account in the last two years. However, after I posted an article about this subject on FBA Mastery, we had a ton of people jump in the comments. I think we had like over 60 comments so far. People jumped in and said, hey, um, I've been selling for five or more years and I've never, and I still got this email. So this pattern appears to me not actually very accurate. But as far as other factors like feedback score and so forth, um, they seem to have nothing to do with it. Uh, excuse me. One of the things um, that someone proposed that I actually think may be true, they said they had surveyed some people and it turns out that every single person that got the email um, had a, a, a textbook listed in new condition. So that may actually be what's triggering it. So um, again, too early to say, but that's the dominant theory right now. But there's two important words used in the Amazon textbook apocalypse email. One of them is popular, the other one is textbook. So um, the restrictions seem to center on these two words. So I'm going to spend some time here discussing what I think these words mean. But first, let's go just a little bit deeper and talk about what else Amazon is saying. So Amazon is not, their communication has not been limited to that email I just showed you. Um, when you, I've had sellers who have reached out to Amazon and said, hey, can you clarify? And Amazon has gotten back to people. And I've been sent screenshots of their emails and forwarded their emails. And so we got a little bit more closer to the truth, a little more evidence out of the emails that Amazon sends as a follow-up. So as I said, I had people forward some of the responses to me. Um, and by the way, just to be clear about Amazon seller support, um, if you have any experience with Amazon, you know that getting a clear answer from them is almost totally hopeless. Sometimes it seems like they're playing a game of like, 
how can we use the most number of words possible to say absolutely nothing, right? It's often in broken English. They often are extremely ver verbose and say almost nothing in the process. It's very frustrating. Um, but with that understanding, let's try to look at what Amazon is saying and some of the follow-up emails they've sent. So, question. Um, and it's a question that was sent to Amazon seller support. Hey, will all textbooks be restricted? Amazon says in a quote that I received, certain important textbooks might have a restriction. That's all they're saying. So um, certain textbooks may have a restriction. That is a far leap from all textbooks are going to be restricted. Okay, so we can all kind of chill out just a little bit. Again, you can never fully trust what Amazon support says. Um, you take it with a grain of salt, but um, I find this a little bit comforting myself. Okay, another question was asked, what should a seller do if they want restrictions lifted? Amazon has to say about this, hey, you need to support, uh, submit a request for approval, approval to order to sell those textbooks on Amazon. So I'm recommending people contact Amazon right now and saying, hey, I want to, I want to request, formally request approval to sell to all textbooks on Amazon if you receive this email. Don't wake the sleeping giant if you have not received this email yet, okay? Don't, um, don't trigger anything from Amazon. So just, just lay low if you haven't gotten the email yet. Um, and another question was sent to them is, hey, you said submit invoices for popular textbooks. What the heck does that mean? Amazon seller support says books, popular textbooks are books that have popularity among buyers and books which may have hype. Remember I said broken English? <laughs> Books that may have hype. Okay, I think we can safely say this email originated somewhere in India. Okay, because that is not a very, it's not well done English as far as I'm concerned. Yes, those are actual quotes. They said books that may have hype. Zero clarity. So round of applause for Amazon for being so vague once again. How do we interpret these quotes? Well, Amazon appears to be saying restrictions will only apply to top selling textbooks. And if a seller is restricted, they can request for the restriction to be lifted, like we saw with the DVDs and just any other category, honestly, that gets, a, that gets gated eventually. Um, you can always request uh, to be approved. So based on the broken English responses of Amazon, we are still a far cry from a textbook ban, okay? So let's go even deeper into what this coded language could really mean and see if we can extract anything even more optimistic. So, what does popular textbook mean? Well, I'm going to attempt to decode that right now. Um, when asked directly, remember Amazon doesn't define this term. Um, as a matter of fact, um, this is actually true. In one email I saw, seller support actually cited Harry Potter as an example of a popular textbook. And if you think I'm making that up, check out this screenshot. This is a screenshot from an Amazon email. I had the person screenshot this because I couldn't believe it. The seller, seller support said, for example, all the Harry Potter series books that have Harry Potter in the title can be called a popular textbook title. Okay, so Amazon seller support is a sorry, sorry joke. Totally insane, uh, but that's the case. So um, I had to do my own research, and I have two very, what I think are strong theories as to what the restrictions will mean when all the smoke clears. The first theory I'm going to propose, and I could be wrong about all this, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, Amazon is going to limit these restrictions to a few publishers. So recently, Amazon and many other sellers got sued. Um, actually, this is actually slightly inaccurate. Many Amazon sellers got sued. I don't think Amazon got sued by three textbook publishers. Uh, Cengage, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Pearson, and McGraw-Hill. And these are three of the biggest textbook publishers, to be fair. Uh, I don't want to downplay it. But it is only three publishers. They sued a bunch of Amazon sellers for, for supposedly selling counterfeit textbooks. And that's what the lawsuits were for. They were trying to force Amazon or compel Amazon to crack down on counterfeiters. Because certain textbooks are counterfeited. Very, very few. But um, the very, very high demand textbooks, you will often sometimes see them counterfeited. So the changes we're seeing now in this uh, textbook apocalypse email, these are motivated, I think it's safe to say, by Amazon wanting to crack down on counterfeit books. Um, these publishers also sued other people involved in the book selling business, such as a textbook distributor named Follett. Follett, Follett. Um, and e emails from Amazon seller support actually confirm the counterfeit concerns. Here is a screenshot. Amazon seller support said, in order to prevent fake products, the restriction has been implemented. So they're pretty much open about the fact this is, in fact, um, about, uh, motivated by wanting to restrict uh, counterfeits. Okay, so we're getting a little closer to the truth now. We are sort of honing in, and this is going to be really important. Understanding this is going to be really, really important in sort of informing um, how we how we uh, 
what changes we make and how we can sort of um, prepare for the future as Amazon booksellers, right? So once we know that Amazon, this is all about uh, curbing counterfeits, then we can start to build a strategy around that. And I'll talk about that in a second. This language is very telling. Uh, my suspicion is that popular is code for possibly the textbooks published by the companies who sued us. <laughs> and actually, again, to be accurate, they didn't actually sue Amazon. They sued some of the, a bunch of sellers. It was 100 sellers, actually. So Amazon may have had some kind of backdoor deal with the companies filing the lawsuits that they will curb third-party sales of their titer, titles and their titles only. Just a theory, once again. Just a theory. Okay, so we've seen... And there's precedent for this. We've seen similar brand-specific restrictions in the past. Um, the situation was very congruent in other categories, in, like again in the again in the past, where Amazon had um, adjusted in response to legal action or threats. We saw that in the toys category, with certain best-selling toys restricted, like um, from uh, certain Pixar toys and things. We saw it again recently in the shoes category, where Nike got restricted. Um, so Amazon does do this. Um, if there's a threat of legal action, Amazon will say, "Hey." Uh, if you drop the lawsuit or don't sue us at all, we will um, limit um, sales of, of third-party sellers selling your products. So based on the lawsuit, whatever restrictions that come may be specific to these three publishers. We don't know. Nothing for certain, but that's what the evidence may point to. So it's not great news, but it's hardly devastating because there's no single publisher personally that I could be restricted from that would put a dent in my business, or at least not a significant one. So these are big publishers. I don't want to downplay it, but um, I, you know, life goes on if Amazon just said, hey, don't sell books from these three publishers. But I think it may actually be even more optimistic than that because the restrictions may actually be condition-based. Here's some clues. Uh, last month, many sellers suddenly found, this is, um, as of the time I'm recording this, this would be uh, roughly April of, uh, I mean, what I'm referring to last month, it would be roughly April or May of 2017. Uh, a bunch of sellers were found that they were restricted from listing books, textbooks in newer like new condition. It seemed to only affect certain textbooks and not other, others. <laughs> So, when I asked sellers what textbooks were being restricted, 100% of them, according to the people that I sampled, were published by one of the three publishers, excuse me, who filed the lawsuits, okay? So, Amazon issued no statement on this, and in fact, when you asked them, they flatly denied these restrictions even existed, but they were very real. They could be proven by simply going to try to list a, a textbook, certain, certain sellers, not all of them. I, I personally have not experienced any restrictions myself, <clears throat> excuse me, but many sellers um, did see these restrictions. So... Amazon tried to deny it, but you could clearly prove otherwise when you went to list certain books. So what we're seeing now could simply be the official rollout of what has already been happening to Amazon booksellers for the last month. This actually may be no change at all. It's just simply Amazon being more official about something they've been, been doing in practice for a while. This is a really key point. These upcoming restrictions that we may see that Amazon's alluding to may be nothing more than what's already been unofficial practice for the past month already. Okay, very key. So if true, and all we have to do is keep our listings to very good condition or worse, we can simply move on and forget this ever happened. This is this if this is the case, this is great news because it simply won't affect Amazon sellers business very much. Now, let's get even more optimistic. What if both of those things are true? What if Amazon's restrictions are only going to be limited to those three publishers in like new or new condition? Okay, if that's the case, we could all simply go home and forget this ever happened. This will be looked upon as the most overblown drama in Amazon seller history because this will not affect us much at all. I personally do very little business in new textbooks, and this wouldn't affect me barely at all. Okay, so part two, how do we decode the word textbook? This is very key to understanding what Amazon is about to do. Um, classifying a textbook, any book as a textbook is hopelessly impossible since the word textbook has no definition. It simply means a book used in college, which applies to most books in the world at some point or another. So in the emails I've seen from Amazon responding to sellers' questions, Amazon seller support describes textbooks as, quote, books <laughs> used for study purposes, including Harry Potter. Uh, yes, wow, thanks Amazon, um, and if you can't hear the sarcasm in my voice, you're missing out, because that it tells us absolutely nothing, right? So of course Amazon's not going to restrict all nonfiction books, that would be insane. They're also not going to restrict all books used in schools, because it's just too many books. Um, and there's no way to tell which books are used in schools, it's all just too vague. <clears throat> and there's several reasons Amazon would be unlikely to restrict all textbooks. This is why Amazon will not restrict textbooks entirely, okay? Here we go. 
You can't ban textbooks because textbook has no definition. Textbook is not defined by a book size, by a format, by a binding, or anything else. You simply can't define it. If a if a a textbook is simply a book that was used in a college classroom, and just about every book at some point or another finds itself into a college syllabus. So you simply cannot manage what cannot be defined, right? So you can't ban textbook because there is no definition for textbook. It would be impossible. So let's say Amazon was actually going to ban all textbooks. Could they do it? How would they do it? Well, if you actually dig into Amazon's sort of uh, metadata a little bit, there actually is a category on Amazon for textbooks. And there actually is a number of, te of books that Amazon sells that they can actually classify as a textbook. Do you want to know what that number is? I had my developer at Zen Arbitrage dig into this. He actually got this number. 2,008,102. That is the exact number of books that Amazon classifies as a textbook. Now, it should be obvious if you've been selling on Amazon for any amount of time, that number is so high, there is no way there are 2 million actual, like what we think of as like textbook textbooks on Amazon, okay? And you're right. So this figure is actually good news because we can confidently say Amazon is not going to ban 2 million books from being sold. For one, that's just too many books. I mean, you know, you could never say never, but the impact of banning 2 million books would be so massive, it's almost unthinkable. Um, books are Amazon's biggest category. They simply can't, I mean, it would just be so unthinkable for Amazon to ban 2 million books, okay? Two, when you look at what Amazon actually has tagged as a textbook, and I had my developer kind of give me access to this so I could kind of poke around. <clears throat> Excuse me. Their definition is close to useless. Amazon tags virtually everything you could think of as a textbook, cliff notes, random best-selling titles, Dover reprints, some university press books and not others, and so on and on and on and on. Even a lot of fiction is tagged as a textbook. Um, sorry about that. Um, so basically, Amazon's definition is very arbitrary and almost totally random, which is good news because if you're one of those people that fears Amazon is going to ban all textbooks, quote unquote, um, if they were going to do that, they would have to define the term, and that is difficult to impossible. So let's go even further and get into another theory. Amazon may only restrict the most well-ranked and expensive books. So as I cover, this is all motivated, this whole thing, all this drama and this, these proposed restrictions are motivated by pressure from the big textbook publishers for Amazon to crack down on counterfeits. So this detail can inform our predictions about the direction this may be going. <clears throat> this is good news. And generally, the only textbooks that are counterfeited are very new, very high demand textbooks. That, this is just the economic reality of counterfeiting. The counterfeiters are only going to put their efforts towards the best selling, highest value books. So we're talking about a very small sliver of the textbook pie here. I've never heard of a textbook being heavily counterfeited that wasn't steadily ranked in the top 30,000. Actually, it's usually 10,000 or better. And actually, it's usually 5,000 or better when you really get into it. Those generally are the only books that are counterfeited. Um, Old copies can float around, certainly, but if you're trying to curb counterfeiting, if you're Amazon, you're really going to go after only the most well-ranked textbooks. And remember, Amazon is only requesting receipts for popular textbooks, so this is probably not accidental. This probably means, they mean this term literally, um, in all likelihood, that they only intend to curb sales of the newest, most well-ranked textbooks, i.e. the books that are the most counterfeited. So. Um, we're getting a lot of, I think, optimistic clues here about what may be to come and how, how light these restrictions may actually be when you kind of dig in to what Amazon really wants from us and what they're trying to change here. So why does all this look probably look worse than it really is right now? Because a lot of people are freaking out, and I've done a lot in this video to try to alleviate some of those concerns, but why um, why do people are see people so concerned about this? And why do I think that when all the smoke clears, this won't be nearly as bad as people think? Well, one, people are panicking without actually reading Amazon's email. It's understandable when you read that email and you see the term, the word uh, provide invoices, that you're going to freak out, right? Because you don't have invoices because you bought your books probably in the secondhand market. <clears throat> now, I don't blame anyone for freaking out, but panic can really cloud doing a sober assessment of what Amazon is, is actually saying, which is, hey, we're planning on restricting certain popular textbooks. Amazon's very clear about this. So um, the nature of the restrictions has yet to be revealed, but it may only be books in new or like new condition, or it could go away altogether. It's just too early to say. Two, the recent um, changes, particularly the fees, um, have kind of created a negative momentum where it, we all 
we're all everything seems kind of apocalyptic right now because there's been new restrictions in the CD category. We've seen new fees. We just are expecting Amazon to do more bad things, right? So after those recent FBA fees hit, we're all a little shell shocked and I think extra sensitive. So that's one of the reasons it looks a lot worse than it probably will end up being. Three, keep in mind, Amazon rolls back restrictions all the time. Do you remember about a year ago, this in 2016, the panic around retail arbitrage? Now Amazon was asking for receipts for everything. Well, Amazon almost totally retreated from that pretty quick, and now you don't even hear about that anymore. No one even remembers that it ever happened. And you kind of have to wonder if that's going to be the case with this textbook drama. Uh, and this is my favorite. The reason this might seem worse than it really is right um, right now is because people are relying on frenzied commentary in Facebook forums. Now, I've said this a hundred thousand times. If you source your information from Facebook, this is a very fast way to get very paranoid and very misinformed, okay? Um, paranoia tends to prevail in these forums. I don't spend a lot of time there because I think it's actually bad, not just for my mental health, but bad for my, my business uh, to get all the, just get sort of, um, exposed to all that chatter, which I think most of it's really, really negative, and most of it's really, really false, and most of it's a lot of people that claim to know what they're talking about that really don't know what they're talking about, and I don't mean to disparage any particular group or person in particular, but Facebook is definitely the place to go if you want to be misinformed about a lot of things. So again, not entirely bad, but you've really got to apply extreme scrutiny to everything said in Facebook because there's so much bad information that floats around. So I personally, as I said before, have not received the textbook apocalypse email, but if I do, in case I do, I've done a couple things to prepare. Number one, I placed a removal order for all of my textbooks in newer like new condition. Okay. Fortunately for me, it wasn't many books, but I wanted to stay off Amazon's radar. So I, I wanted this to be a gesture of good faith to Amazon. Hey, I'm taking this seriously. I'm not going to sell anything in newer like new condition in case that's triggering this. Number two, I placed all my textbooks from those three publishers who filed the lawsuits on inactive status. Now, this might be slightly paranoid, but I, again, I want to stay off Amazon's radar. So um, just keep in mind, I said I put them on inactive status. I didn't, and that, that just removes the listing from being live. I didn't place a removal order for those. I didn't go that far. Um, I'm just leaving them unlisted until all the dust settles, and I just kind of, again, want to stay off Amazon's radar. Um, Amazon has a history of being very permissive with granting access to gated categories immediately after the restrictions are implemented. So um, what I'm recommending that people do right now is get in touch with Amazon and just say, hey, I'm requesting, I'm formally requesting permission to be totally fully ungated in the textbook category. Because as you go on um, and when the textbook restrictions, if they get implemented, um, it's going to get harder and harder. And you see this in other categories. As time goes on, once they implement restrictions, it gets harder and harder as time goes on to actually get ungated. And given permission in these categories. So I would personally, if you got the email, formally request of Amazon right now, hey, I, I'm taking this this moment or this just gesture to let you know I'm interested in selling all textbooks, getting totally zero restrictions. Can you please unrestrict me from whatever may be around the corner and um, get it in writing? So that's, that's cool. That's really key. Um, so if I had received the email, <clears throat> here's what I suggest people doing. If you are one of the people who got the email, um, I would provide the best receipts that I have right away. I would also, as I said, open a support ticket and formally request that Amazon um, allow you to sell all textbooks. As I said before, it gets harder as time goes on. Um, if you're in a position to, well, I'll get this in a second. Let's just get, just, just wrap up this whole video and just a couple takeaways. Um, Amazon's not banning textbooks. They may restrict certain textbooks. They may be only be these restrictions may be limited only to certain publishers. They may only be books in certain conditions. It may even just be books of a certain demand. No one knows anything, including me. So hey, I could be wrong <laughs> about everything, right? I have to give that disclaimer. These are just my it's just my analysis. But here's your to-do list. Um, these are these are the steps you can take right now. First of all, don't accept fear spread in forums, okay? Defer to the evidence, not all the chatter. Um, remember that it's never as bad as it seems in the beginning. Consider removing books from the aforementioned publishers from your inventory. Consider removing all textbooks in new or like new condition. Contact Amazon and request clarification on their vague email. This is really important. I think if we all got on Amazon and said, hey, the email you sent is not sufficient. I can't plan the future of my business around something that vague. Please, please, please be truthful with us as sellers. Show us some respect. <laughs> 
And um, I think if we all did that, it would go a long way. Send Amazon the most legit-looking receipts you have. And if you are in a position to place an order and get receipts from an actual book wholesaler, do that. Now, Amazon's restrict um, requesting invoices from books that are already in your inventory, but this can't hurt. Um, what Amazon really wants to see is some very official invoices from very official book distributors. So if you're in a position to do that, um, it can't really hurt to submit these, even though it's not exactly what Amazon's asking for. So I have a couple freebies for you before we close out this video. Do you guys like free stuff? I bet you do. Okay, so um, if you don't have this yet, I've already sold over two, not sold, given away over 2,000 copies of this book. It's a totally free book. It's paperback, a literal book shipped to your door. It's called Online Book Arbitrage. The only thing I ask is that you pay printing and shipping. Um, so it comes to about $5.90. I actually lose when um, the payment processor fees come out. I lose about it's like 33 cents per book. Um, but I want to get it in your hands. Again, just a cool thing. Free information. It's, 90, I think, 94 pages. Totally free. No strings. It's just $5.90 for printing and shipping. I think I'm going to put a link below this video. It's onlinebookarbitrage.com. If there is no link there, just onlinebookarbitrage.com. Again, I ship this to your door. It goes out next day. It is packed full of information on how you can find cheap books on Amazon and resell them back on Amazon for a profit. Free book. Cool thing. More free stuff. I got a bunch of free reports, including one or two that's not even pictured here. I have a cool one on the top 10 most overlooked used book sources. Um, but if you go to fbamastery.com right now, there should be a link below this video. You can get a free report. Um, get these reports, and I think one more that I have up. Um, totally for free, no strings, just PDF. You get instant download and learn cool stuff about how to get started on FBA, pricing strategy for FBA sellers. Um, some cool tricks to make more money and a bunch of sources you may not have heard of. So thanks everybody for watching this video and check out my other videos and I hope um, you guys all have a profitable month and year in life ahead of you. Thank you very much.